Hey guys, CS Joseph with csjoseph.life doing uh, episode seven for season 17. This is who are the Beta Quadra. Uh, the Beta Quadra is known as the Templars. The Templars are known as the STP NFJ Quadra, uh, which are basically anyone who has extroverted feeling, introverted thinking, extroverted sensing, and introverted tuition as four cognitive functions. Uh, within uh, your cognitive stack, at least in terms of your ego, right? And that represents, uh, you know, all the, uh, uh, all those types, NFJs and STPs uh, within the Templar Quadra. In this particular lecture, uh, we're, we're exploring quadras because it's an aspect of socionics. I actually put, personally, I put a lot of stock into socionics because socionics uh, is, uh, in my opinion, a lot more advanced uh, in terms of MBTI, but I think socionics continues to fall short on many things, especially with compatibilities for relationships and certain uh, relationship examples between each of the individual types and the relationship roles thereof. Uh, but I do maintain that I have to give credit where it is due, just like I have to give credit to where it's due with Dr. Uh, John Beebe, Dr. Linda Behrens, uh, even in some cases, David Kiersey, Ugh. but uh, it's necessary. It's necessary to uh, keep things uh, in track or on track uh, in that regard, and then get that uh, figure out uh, figured out. So, uh, but anyway, uh, this is a live lecture. Uh, doing it for Patreon gold tier and above. If you guys want to find out more about that, this uh, lecture will be posted uh, publicly on YouTube after the live Q and A session. Uh, the live Q&A session uh, will take place immediately following this lecture and people from the live stream chat uh, will be able to participate and ask questions uh, relating to the content of this lecture. So it's kind of more of a classroom setting. I'm going to deliver the lecture and then we're going to have Q&A at the end. Uh, we can talk about the content of this lecture, etc. And then uh, we'll just kind of do a deep, deep dive from here. So anyway, uh, so yeah, socionics uh, definitely uh, has some things correct. And uh, one of the things presented by socionics is the concept of quadras. And uh, quadras are basically another vector that one could utilize uh, with, uh, in conjunction with the type grid to help determine someone's type. Because quite frankly, if you know a person's quadra, you've instantly eliminated 12 of the 16 types on the type grid and have narrowed it down to four types basically. And then at that point, all you need to do uh, is test for uh, a communication style slash interaction style, they're the same, as well as temperament slash disposition, they are the same. Uh, so you're doing those two other vectors, and then you can basically figure out from there which of the four uh, remaining types is that person's type. Now granted, if you try to use cognitive axis uh, analysis to try to determine uh, uh, their type, you could use that in conjunction with the other uh, vectors, but if you are able to identify cognitive axis, both cognitive axes, the one for perceiving versus uh, judgments, you'd instantly be able to know a person's quadra and eliminate 12 types uh, there from the type grid. So anyway, also don't forget, this is season 17. And why is it necessary to understand quadras in season 17? The reason why is because season 17 is focusing on the basic structure of the mind. We have the four sides of the mind, and then we have the quadras, uh, as well as looking at cognitive development in children, and then ultimately leading up to a form of parenting, and uh, some additional metaphysical analysis as a result of all those things, and kind of the, the symbology that comes into play with that, etc. cetera. Uh, but anyway, uh, be that as it may, uh, we're just we're continuing on right where we left off with uh, season 17 episode 6 which is who are the crusaders or the crusader quadra which is sfj ntp quadra now if you guys remember just a little bit of review here crusader types are based on justice and fairness and uh, they uh, they wield the icy sword of truth because they're trying to um, wield truth in such a way where they're bringing about justice however uh, uh, STP NFJ Quadra are, are actually doing something completely different and they wield the fiery sword of truth which is utilized uh, as a form of uh, ultimately it's the form of healing um, uh, they're doing this in such a way to bring about their number one product uh, whereas you know for Crusaders it's justice but the number one product of the Templar types 
uh, or the beta quadras types are basically, it, it is righteousness. Uh, building or finding righteousness in other people, also known as uh, strength of character. Building strength and character in others, uh, as well as teaching strength and character in others. Uh, that is literally the purpose of the Templars. Now, sometimes you look at the uh, philosopher quadra, they're focusing on exploration, uh, developing a philosophy, etc. Whereas you look at the Templar quadra and it's like they don't care about exploration. It's all about um, improving, improving other human beings. And this is why the INFJ as a member of the uh, of this particular uh, quadra, we're actually gonna look at my whiteboard here right now. So looking at this whiteboard, as you can see, you know, the INFJ is, is represented. I've always said that the INFJ type out of all the 16 types is the number one type to improve other people uh, and, and build strength of character of the people with their ESTP subconscious. But the same thing can also be applied to the ESTP as well, except instead of doing it on a group of people, they're more actually mentoring one person at a time because it's an INFJ uh, subconscious that is improving other people and building character and strength of character in others. That's basically the entire point. Now, I would like to say Templar types out of all the 16 types are actually the best at typing other people. And I mean, I'm not even like, let's be honest, uh, being able to utilize uh, and understand the type grid. These types, in my opinion, uh, are best at typing people. They, they straight up are. Uh, my um, Both of my mentors in this science, they're both Templar types. One's an ESTP, one is an INFJ, although the ESTP still maintains he's an ISTP to this day. I completely disagree with him because I don't think he quite understands introversion versus extroversion. And he doesn't exactly understand uh, the interaction styles quite well because um, he doesn't really see himself as an initiator, mostly because his extroverted sensing hero bubble has closed off other people uh, in his life because he doesn't want to be obligated by them. Because guess what? Templar types are all about freedom of choice, but none of the, but the four out of the four Templar types who are the most sensitive to freedom of choice is absolutely the ESTP. I love licorice tea. So why is that important? Well, if you don't, uh, freedom of choice, like, like it, it, you remember, you remember how we're talking about the, uh, the crusaders and like the icy sword of truth. It, it, and it really is, uh, endurance or discipline mixed in with truth, right? Which gives them a sense of justice. But when it comes to the Templars, it's actually the fires of willpower. It's willpower and truth coming together, which ends up creating a beacon of righteousness uh, for other people. Um, and uh, this is this is absolutely uh, necessary. Um, hold on, I need to make a note here. Um, there we go. One of the uh, hangups of the of the Templar uh, quadra that I forgot to uh, write down in my notes. Just want to make sure that I have it right. So but anyway, the point is, is that these types exist, like their number one uh, existence is to produce righteousness and produce righteousness in other people. They're trying to find the righteous. They are trying to find men or and women of character. And if they find someone who is lacking in character, they're, they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to take their fiery sword of truth and slash away and burn away the lies, basically of that person with their flimsy uh, their flimsy straw man of a self and they'll burn that straw man away to actually expose who the real person is. And then after exposing that person, exposing how irresponsible that person is, experiencing, uh, exposing how that person lacks humility entirely, exposing how that person is foolish and unwise, and exposing, exposing how that person lacks in self-mastery entirely, exposing each of these things, exposing how a person is uh, immature, et cetera, it's literally, they're just exposing, they're shining the light, the fiery light of truth on somebody to expose the fact that that person is weak. And then after they've like, hey, you are lacking in character, you are lacking in integrity, you are lacking in righteousness. Well, guess what? I'm gonna build that character in you. I'm gonna make you better. Because the job of the Templar type is to not only break someone down uh, with truth, 
then they heal them up afterwards. They break them down with their TI and then they heal them with FE, basically. So they criticize them, grind them into dust, and then they begin the process of healing other people. Now, what is the best example of this in popular culture? Hmm, I wonder. That's right, the anime Inuyasha, actually. So, um, so it's all about the swords. It's about the swords that Inuyasha and his brother Sashomaru wield, basically. Inuyasha, Inuyasha wields the sword that is would be wielded by the Crusaders, basically. Whereas Sashomaru, who is very jealous of his brother Inuyasha, Sashomaru actually wields the sword of healing. It's a very, very powerful sword. It's like the most powerful sword in everything, technically more powerful than Inuyasha's sword because Inuyasha's sword exists to destroy. The Icy Sword of Truth is a sword of justice and it meets out justice on other people. Whereas uh, the sword that Sashomaru actually wields is a sword of healing. It burns, it cuts things down, but then it cauterizes the wounds and it actually improves the opponent actually, and makes them stronger, makes them accept that there's an issue. It all goes down to like uh, this premise. When, uh, when it, t Templars exist to get rid of charlatanry, right? It's all about getting rid of charlatans. This is why uh, my critics uh, who are STPs uh, between Flow State, uh, aka Taylor, Damien, etc., uh, as well as um, as well as uh, Eric with talking with famous people, etc. These men are STPs. They imagine and are projecting onto me that I'm like their superego and ENFP. And then as a result of that, they're trying to teach people that I'm some like flimsy uh, charlatan. Thanks, Beauty. That looks amazing, actually. Um, some uh, chorizo. Uh, so uh, based on that, you know, Templar types exist to expose the charlatans of the world, right? And they do that with, with the truth, but they have to break people down first with introverted thinking and criticize them with the fiery sword of truth. Only then, after they've been broken down, then the healing can actually begin and then they're actually improving those people and making them better. This is literally what all four of the Templar types do consistently. And it's just like how, it's just like how a Sashomaru's sword of healing actually works. Because the end result of building strength of character, finding strength and character in somebody, uh, teaching them how to become a righteous person and then holding them to the standard of righteousness, uh, that person has that high strength of character, they've been healed and then they can actually go out and heal others, right? And it creates this like pyramid scheme or this multi-level marketing or this network marketing of healing where Templar types are actually healing other people through other people. You see this with the ultimate Templar in, in all of history, which is Jesus Christ as an INFJ, doing this through his disciples. He'd first work on his disciples and when his disciples were ready, he would teach them how to heal people and then they went and healed other people. And it was as if Jesus was healing other people through his disciples, etc. That is the entire process, and that was how it is uh, recommended there. There's another concept, right? Like, um, you know, turning your enemy into an ally, right? So Somaru's sword of healing is used, you know, that fiery sword of truth. It is the sword of truth. Or like Richard Cipher uh, from uh, uh, Wizard's First Rule, uh, who becomes, who realizes his real name is Richard Rawl, and he, uh, um, you know, his brother, uh, Darkenrall, is this uh, crusader type, but he himself is this Templar, and the Templar who is the seeker of truth, who is wielding the sword of truth. The truth itself, yeah, it hurts. It's absolutely devastating, and it cauterizes those wounds, but it actually ultimately performs and provides healing. Why else do you guys think that I come off so brash and so nasty and uh, so cringe or, wow, Chase, he's a total ass or, you know, or, or wow, he's very harsh or he's brutal, etc. It's because I'm literally wielding Inuyasha's sword and kicking major ass with it. Let's be honest. But says Shomaru's sword, the sword of the Templar, exists to heal people. And yeah, let me tell you, it's absolutely devastating and it hurts because it's got to burn the lies away. That's how it works. Just like that old saying or that old poem where this man, he dies, he goes to hell and he's being tortured by these demons and burned and exposed and beaten over and over and over and over and he's bleeding all over and he's like crying out to the demons, why are you doing this to me? Why are they doing this to me? And then they reply back, 
hey, we're just trying to save your soul here. And he's like, what? And then he realized the, demo, the demons aren't actually demons. They're actually angels trying to save his soul by burning the lies away. So let me tell you, Sashomaru's sword of T-I-F-E definitely hurts. Oh yeah, it hurts. It hurts a lot. But it ultimately teaches, ah, it ultimately teaches a lesson to their opponent where the opponent literally has their charlatanry, their stupidity, their ignorance, their foolishness, their uh, arrogance, right? Their lack of responsibility completely burned away from their souls. And this, this is this is consistent uh, when it comes to uh, to TIFE. This is very very consistent. Uh, it doesn't go away. This is literally how this works with Templar types. They do this all the time. But I think about it this way. If you have an opponent and you have an enemy, right, and you are diametrically opposed to your enemy, isn't it interesting when all of a sudden, you know, uh, an enemy who's been your enemy for like, say, a decade, and then all of a sudden you criticize them in this one way, and then they realize that they were wrong after all that time. They take full responsibility for their actions, right? And then as a result of that, they change, and they're no longer an enemy anymore. Actually, they're an ally, an ally who respects you. You know, this is why the, the law of power, uh, uh, you know, I think it's second law of power or third law of power, you know, uh, you know, always be careful around friends, but learn how to use enemies because a friend will ultimately betray you usually, right? Wounds from a friend can be expected, but an enemy multiplies with kisses. That's also from the book of Proverbs. Uh, but look at it this way, an enemy, etc. The way enemies work, uh, an enemy uh, has something to prove. And if you defeated your enemy in the past, but then they have something to prove to you, give them an opportunity to become an ally and they'll become your greatest ally. That's the point. That's literally how Templars run their life. That's literally how they live their life. Although the quickest way to a Templar's heart is taking responsibility for your actions. If you're incapable of taking responsibility for your actions, they will door slam you. The INFJ most of all. Because the INFJ sees themselves as this person who's so insanely giving uh, to, to multiple people that if they are not appreciated or if these people are disloyal to them, they will have nothing to do with them ever again because expert in sensing inferior is so sensitive to abandonment, so sensitive to a lack of loyalty, they instantly cut off that person with their SID and it's as if that person is dead to them, right? However, all of the Templars, all the STP NFJ types absolutely do the same thing. They all door slam in some capacity. Although the ENFJ has a hard time door slamming compared to the others, but uh, the INFJ is the most sensitive to it. ESTP being second most sensitive, ISTP third most sensitive with the ENFJ, not as sensitive, but it's still sensitive enough that they do this consistently, right? This is literally how this works. And guys, uh, please hold your questions uh, for the very end after the lecture. Uh, we'll definitely get to your questions if you've been asking any questions. I'm not actually paying attention at all to the chat feed whatsoever. Uh, and I'm hoping that uh, we don't have any drop frames here, which doesn't seem like we have. So that is a good thing. Awesome. So be that as it may. Remember, uh, the, the, the fiery sword of truth actually has the power to turn allies or turn enemies into allies. And it's absolutely important. Why is that? And the answer to that question is forgiveness. And forgiveness, the forgiveness uh, out of all the types, the Templars have the greatest capacity for forgiveness. They have the greatest capacity for um uh, for mercy. Unlike the crusader types who are very justice oriented, this is one of my biggest criticisms of crusader types is because crusader types, when they're using their icy sword of truth instead of the fiery sword of truth, they actually end up creating more enemies. Because what happens when you exact justice or that justice becomes a selfish form of justice, it becomes vengeance. Justice meted out on other human beings when you exact justice on another human being, if it's done in a selfish way, that is actually revenge. It is vengeance. It's about you. It's not about them per se. That's vengeance. And vengeance creates more enemies. This is why the icy sword of truth, while it's very powerful, Inuyasha's sword is very powerful and can defeat everybody and everybody. Yes, it can, but it creates just as many 
enemies as it beats. The same goes, folks, with the Elder Wand. Remember the story of the Deathly Hallows? The Elder Wand is literally an example of the Icy Sword of Truth. Why else do you think the ENTP Gellert Grindelwald actually wields it? Because whoever has the Elder Wand is ultimately killed off because people want the Elder Wand because of its destructive power. It's no different than Inuyasha's sword in the anime. It's exactly how it works, okay? And that's the Sword of the Crusaders. And the Sword of Crusaders, everyone wants it. Everyone wants to be able to defeat. No one wants that Sword of Healing, right? But without that Sword of Healing, without that Sword of Forgiveness, without that Sword that builds character on other people, without that Sword of Mercy, and trust me, it hurts. And it kind of seems like it's deadly, but in the end, it burns all the lies away. When that happens... Is that really what something who seek power are actually after? No, they want the Crusader's icy sword of truth because it's devastating. But here's the thing. Why does that sword of truth, why is that fiery sword of truth actually exist? Why is it wielded by the gladiator? Why is it wielded by the paladin? Why is it wielded by the cleric? Why is it wielded by the artificer, these types? Why is it wielded by them? Because they exist to be the avatars of mercy and forgiveness. If you take full responsibility for your actions and be consistent about it and prove concretely to these four types that you actually are different and changed, they will forgive you. They will have mercy on you. Why else does Jesus Christ teach forgiveness so much? Because he has the greatest capacity for forgiveness, such as the shedding of his blood equals the remission of sins, according to biblical texts, right? But the point is, you know, the point is, is that even INFJs understand that they have the greatest capacity of forgiveness of all the types. It is much as they have the greatest capacity of screw you of all the types. Why is that? Because like, you know, even Jesus says, you know, even Jesus says like, uh, depart from me. I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness, right? He's not f as forgiving to that person. But to the other person, he's like, well done, my good and faithful, ah, faithful servant. See, Templars need people who are faithful to them. That's how it works. Without people who are faithful to them, it's like, well, why do I even bother? They need people who are faithful, people who are consistent, people who are righteous, righteous enough to take full responsibility for their actions, right? That's literally how it works. Because without Templar types, let's be honest, without Templar types, humanity would get to a point where they are lack, where they're unforgivable. Look at it, go back to Harry Potter. There's three unforgivable curses. The Imperius Curse, where you're controlling another person's mind, or the Cruciatus Curse, where you are uh, torturing other people. Or then there's the uh, the Death Curse, you know, which is literally like a, a different way of saying abracadabra because the cadaver is like a cadaver. It's like death itself. It's like become dead, right? The three unforgivable curses. If the Templars do not exist to hold that back within this world, well, guess what? There's not gonna be anyone forgiving humanity. And humanity may as well get thrown in the dumpster and be consumed by the flames. Because the flames, the fiery sword of truth and the truth of the flames will burn them up. But because of the fiery sword of truth wielded by the Templars, we have an opportunity to change as human beings because of STPs and NFJs. And this is also why I constantly state the INFJ Ultimately, while they are seen as the most worthless of all the types, they are actually, quite frankly, the most important of all the types because they lead humanity. They are the tip of the spear. But guess what? The, they have the biggest responsibility as a result. Wait a minute. Well, let's talk about that. Because I thought that the fiery sword of truth as wielded, as T-I-F-E, as wielded by the Templars because they're mixing willpower and truth and that equals righteousness, the sword of righteousness. In order for them to wield such a powerful weapon to be able to imp imp improve and forgive others, let me tell you something about that weapon. It's double-edged. It's a double-edged sword. Why else does it say in the book of Revelation when Jesus comes back, you know, uh, a second time, and it's as if a double-edged blade comes out of his mouth. His tongue is a double-edged blade. It is the weapon of truth, right? The fiery sword of truth, right? It's a double-edged sword, meaning it cuts people 
and it cuts the wielder at the same time, both, which means Templars need to stop being hypocrites because they are. Just like Crusader types are hypocrites, Templars are hypocrites too. Let me tell you a story. I happen to know a certain ISTP within the audience who has this attitude of, well, you know, I'm going to decide to like be irresponsible. I'm gonna push out my responsibilities till later because responsibilities gets in the way of my freedom of choice, right? So I'm gonna be selfish with my freedom of choice and live my life the way I want to live it. And I'm gonna shirk all my responsibilities because I'm a hypocrite. I could go out of my way criticizing everybody else about how they're lacking in character, about how they're unforgivable, about how they're lacking in righteousness, right? I'm gonna shirk my responsibility because as long as I'm not criticizing anybody else for being irresponsible, I'm gonna give myself license to be irresponsible. Yay, hypocrites. Every single Templar does this. I hate it. It's so annoying. You hypocrites, you people think you're so great when you walk around and be like, wow, that guy should probably get his, you know, he should get his life together. Or, hey, you know, if he'd only fix this, wow, you know, I really hate it when I'm trying to help people, but they don't even listen to me. And because they don't listen to me, I don't even know why I bother. And I'm like, yeah, here, let me get a mirror for you. Since when have you ever taken responsibility for your actions? You know what's really funny about the Templar types? They're the most forgiving of the types, except for when, you know, they're the most unforgiving of all the types. I remember how many times my own father, for example, as an ENFJ, would just like literally have this th problem where, you know, a friend, uh, someone we went to used to, we used to go to church with 10 years, you know, and a uh, really cool guy, he came up to me, hey man, I'd really like to talk to your dad. I haven't seen him in like over a decade. I really would like to talk to him. I, I need to tell him some things. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. I go over to my dad, I told my dad, hey, this is like two days later, hey, this guy came up to me, I don't really remember him because I was really young at that time, but he says he really, really wants to talk to you. My dad looked at me and he's like, I don't ever want to talk to that guy. I'm like, well, why not? He's like, that guy's a drug addict. That guy did this, that guy did this, that guy did this, that guy did this. I door slammed him, I have nothing to do with that man. And I'm like, hey, dad, what if over the last 10 years, that guy actually changed? Oh, but wait, for some reason, Templar types don't see it that way because, you know, they live so much in the moment, right? And that person has become a permanent totem that whenever they think or are, have to deal with that person in their face or even think of that person or reintroduce that person, all those bad memories of that person's poor behavior comes back. And then they automatically assume because they haven't seen anything because, you know, monkey see, monkey do, right? With these Templar types, ooh, I didn't see any positive change over time. So I automatically get to do the ignorant thing as an STP NFJ and automatically assume that those people are just as corrupt and bad as they were before. This is my number one criticism of Templars. You hypocrites. I am so tired of this. Give people the room to change over time. Guess what, Templars? Because it is your responsibility to create and find righteousness, to create and build character in other people. It is your responsibility to consider the possibility that that person may have changed for the better and go find out. So undoor slam them for a minute, go find out, oh, he didn't change, redoor slam him and move on. Or have a conversation, maybe criticize them a little bit, see if they can take it, right? Check that, you know, if you're an ESTP, check that structural integrity. Does this person have integrity? Or build that integrity. That's what the Templar types are all about. You're supposed to be mentoring people, but instead, no, I have to assume, you know, that like, uh, because I haven't seen with my own eyes, this person change over time. I get to assume that they didn't change or their other hypocrisy. Oh, as long as I'm not criticizing anyone else for being irresponsible, I get to be irresponsible anytime I want. I get to go be that nymphomaniac. I get to go try whatever drug I want and have as much DMT. Ooh, hashtag INFJ ayahuasca. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow, can you like get even more irresponsible? 
You guys are making pathetic excuses. And yet all the time, you're pointing your finger to everybody else being like, oh, they're making excuses. And I'm like, yeah, but what about you, you hypocrites? Are you serious? Your fiery sword of truth is supposed to be cutting you in as much as it cuts your opponent. Wake up. I... I, this is especially a problem with STPs where they're like, oh, you know, as long as they don't judge anyone else for being irresponsible, I get to be as irresponsible as I want. And it's like they keep pushing out their adulthood. They keep pushing out their manhood. They keep pushing out their responsibilities. Oh, you know, I'm going to date all these girls and I'm going to sleep with all of them as much as I can and, uh, you know, enjoy my my youth, my, my childhood, etc. And, and not have all these responsibilities because that's what I want to do because I'm a selfish prick. Yay. And then because, you know, I'm not ever agreeing because I'm not ever agreeing to an official relationship. I get to have as much sex as I want without any repercussions, right? You know, this these types of people who have no concept of the consequences of their actions. And then they judge everybody else for not understanding the consequences of actions. Because, ooh, I'm an SENI user and I have TIFE. And, you know, I don't really understand the concept of cause and effect. So I'm just going to cause this thing and see what happens. I'm going to sleep with this person and see what happens. I'm going to try this drug and see what happens. Because I'm not calling out anyone else for their drug use. I ain't calling anyone else out for the nymphomania. So that means I get to be irresponsible, right? Wow. Pathetic. You people that do this are pathetic. You make me sick. Wake up. It's your jobs, Templars, to be out there healing people. It's your job to be the ultimate example of righteousness and responsibility to other people. How dare you just be like, oh, I'm going to put off my responsibilities later so I can be irresponsible now in the moment because hashtag instant gratification. Wow, you're just as bad as ESFPs with instant gratification all of a sudden. How viceful of you. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, guys. I don't know how many times I, I have women coming up to me complaining about their Templar boyfriend who will not agree, ever agree, to having a, a, an official relationship with them because, you know, it's like, hey, you know, why buy the cow when I can milk it for free? hypocrites while simultaneously they're criticizing that guy over there for having his life not together wow so pathetic and it's not and it's funny how stps and nfjs are not even aware that they do this to people it's so utterly pathetic i hate it you know maybe they should figure this out now let's explain why the templar types do this because the ignorance of ti i didn't talk much about this in the crusaders lecture but the ignorance of ti is this a TI user, TI users get ignorant all the time. We know why. I'll explain that a little bit more in the TI user lectures coming up very soon. We got the Wayfarers next, which are NTJ uh, SFP Quadra. And then we have the Philosophers, who are the uh, NFP SCJ Quadra. We'll talk about their ignorance, but let's focus on the ignorance of TI. All those TI users, they think they're so smart all the time. They think they're so intelligent. They think they know the truth. Well, <laughs> not always the case. Because the truth is, TI can be pretty ignorant because if they're lacking an in input because they decide not to listen, oh, ENFJs, this is where I get to trash you a little bit because you people are so like, you are trying so hard to get everyone else to listen to you, but you won't listen to anyone. I'm sorry, ENFJs, but out of all the Templars, you are the most closed-minded of them. You are so closed-minded. I can't stand it. It's a problem. Of course, I can make the same argument with the ESFJs for my own quadra. They are also probably even more closed-minded than ENFJs. Let's be straight. But out of the Templar types, the ENFJs are insanely closed-minded. It's because I need to get, I need to go out of my way to make sure you listen to me. Because if you don't listen to me, my demon's going to come out and take away your opinion. Because if you don't give me a voice, you don't get a voice. And it's like, yeah, but I listened to you for like the last three days. And now you're jumping on me right now for this? Oh, that's right. You have SI Trickster and can't remember that I've actually listened to you this entire time. <gasps> oh, hypocrites. Stop with the hypocrisy. Realize that externally, this is how people view you people. This is how people see you Templar types. It's so annoying, right? All right. A little bit of drop frames. Hopefully it holds. I'm trying to double check here for this. 
So anyway, I'm gonna try to uh, keep track of the stream integrity here, make sure it's still good, don't want any more drop frames. So uh, the point is like, guys, realize like this is a serious issue, uh, you know, how can you be the types when your job is to wield the fiery sword of truth? If you know the truth, why are you choosing not to live by it? Because of your sensuality? Because of your debauchery? Are you Templars that debauched? Wake up. Seriously, wake up. It's your job to be exposing people. It's your job to tell the truth. Just kind of like how, you know, Flow State and Eric with talking with famous people are trying to expose me all the time. I hope they continue to expose me indefinitely. It only drives me additional traffic and more attention. And I appreciate that, gentlemen. Thank you very much. But at the same time, it's like, you know, you have to understand, like, TI could still be ignorant. This is what leads to these hypocritical behaviors. And how is TI ignorant? Two ways. It's ignorant with preferred input, and it's ignorant with last known input. When a TI user decides to be closed-minded and think that only they know the truth and nobody else does, then they stop listening to other people. When they stop listening, they make decisions based on last known information. And their knowledge tower, this logical tower inside their soul is literally a game of Jenga. And this tower will eventually fall and crash. And that's like midlife crisis because they're literally cannibalizing their own sense of truth. Well, this is true, then this is true, this is true, and this is true, this is true, and this is true, and this is true, and then this is true. It's a game of Jenga. It fails. That tower will fall. That's the point of Jenga, right? Or they have preferred input. or And then they have this little TI echo chamber where I only want to hear what people agree with me because I'm a TI user. And what people value, if we all value the same thing, then we all agree. Nice. Preferred input there because you're not accepting any additional TE input that might get in the way of your little TI logic. Wow. Your little FE value system. Wow. That's nice because your FE value system is getting in the way of the truth because your FE value system is preventing you from hearing opposing points of view. A non-ignorant, wise TI user is somebody who listens to other points of view, even if they disagree with them, and then they use their TI logic to process and test every single one of those opposing points of view and non-opposing points of view to determine what the truth is. That's a wise TI user. But the TI user who doesn't do that is an ignorant one. And it's that ignorance that leads to a Templar type being able to come to the point where, well, you know, I get to be irresponsible because I'm not calling anyone else on being irresponsible. I get to give myself license, license to behave badly. Or here's another form of hypocrisy that I can't stand. You know, when they give themselves license to behave badly because other people are behaving badly because, you know, Templar types are mirrors, right? Here's your mirror, right? They're mirrors, especially the INFJ out of all of them. But the mirroring behavior, ooh, I'm going to mirror you. And because you're behaving badly, I'm going to give myself license to behave badly. Wow, hypocrites. That's effective. That's just not going to work at all. Like, that's so annoying, too. Because... Here's the bottom line, Templars. You have no right to behave poorly just because someone else is behaving poorly. You know the old adage of, well, everyone is doing it. That's why I get to have sex. That's why I get to have drugs. That's why I get to party. Everyone else is doing it. Wow. Excuses. It's funny. The types, the, the four types that are calling everyone else out on making excuses are the types that make the most excuses. You know, it's funny, the Templars who are uh, out there to expose the hypocrisy out of all of us and prevent us from becoming unrighteous charlatans are the most <laughs> hypocritical of us all. And I thought you guys were supposed to be wielding the fiery sword of truth. Wow. Don't be pathetic, guys. Wake up. Goes on. If a Templar actually lives in truth and they are not being ignorant and they're not having preferred input and they're not living their life by a, a last known input, you know, the Jenga tower or preferred input, the echo chamber, if they're not living their life and their thinking in this way and then allowing themselves to become irresponsible, if the Templar is committed to responsibility, if the Templar is committed to being the avatar of righteousness, if they are committed to being the uh, the avatar of high character and great character, 
it's interesting how Templars are attracted to people of good character. You know what I'm saying? It's very interesting how that is. They are attracted to people who have good integrity. It's because they're supposed to be a source of integrity themselves and building integrity in other people. You hear about Jesus talk about build your house on a rock. There's a reason for that. It's structural integrity. It's fiery sort of truth. It's righteousness. It's building of character. This is why STPs and NFJs use their loyalty checks and use their SE to pound on people and to pound on things to see if that person has any spine. It's wonder, no wonder that, you know, the Templar uh, Quadra accuses the Philosopher Quadra, uh, STJ NFPs, of being spineless. Spineless charlatans. No wonder that's happening, right? Well, see, but you know, Templars decide to shirk responsibility and that and then that allows the SDJ NFPs to become spineless and then they end up becoming, you know, so depraved, the philosophers end up becoming so depraved that they're trying to search their life for their I win button and they create that I win button at the expense of other human beings, right? We'll talk a little bit more about the philosopher's stone later. But the point is, if the Templars are not being hypocrites and actually living their life righteously, because they know, they know, in fact, they know more than anyone the difference between right and wrong. They know what good character looks like. They know what righteousness looks like. They can make the choice. It's all about choice. The choice to live that way. Why? Because the fiery sort of truth is literally, righteousness literally equals willpower plus truth. The sword of righteousness, the sword of fire, the sword of character, the sword of healing equals willpower plus truth. They always have a choice. And if the Templar, they just make excuses. They are making the choice to be irresponsible. They're making that choice. Because everything they do is actually intentional. There is no such thing as, well, you know, I, I didn't intend for that consequence to happen. Bullshit. That's not actually accurate. You guys got to understand, like, this is not really how it works. These people are just as hypocritical as the rest of us, yet they judge us so much for being, you know, lacking in character, for being charlatans, right? When they won't even look themselves in the mirror, when they when they continue to shirk their responsibility and push out their responsibility, that's, that's nice. That's effective. This is not how it works. A wise Templar, their job is to build that righteousness. So let's look at the individual four types. You have the ESTP, they're the gladiator. They gladiate with people, but then they have the INFJ subconscious, that inner paladin. The gladiator becomes the paladin, and then that paladin is able to build into one individual. And, you know, this is where the ESTP, they naturally have their own wolf pack. They naturally have their own disciples, but they're trying to find for themselves the ultimate disciple, right? Where it's backwards with the INFJ. They are the ultimate disciple themselves, and then they become their leader, and then they end up having their own wolf pack right? It's a little bit different. It's completely different, right? They are the sage of the mountain, the INFJ, the paladin, right? Both of these types are wielding the fiery sword of truth. That's how they work. ENFJ exists to become a great teacher and teach multitudes of people, uh, you know, uh, righteousness and teach multitudes of people uh, building character, etc. Uh, but then, you know, uh, but then they're trying to build that integrity uh, for themselves. And they think that tests of uh, feats of strength of uh, the ENFJ and feats of strength is the concrete proof of good high moral character. And the ISTP, where feats of strength are able to be achieved consistently, the ISTP takes the most risks. The ISTP invented the sport known as the skeleton in you know the Winter Olympics, going head first down, and all you have is a little, little slider, and hopefully you don't get injured going down as if you're like the human bobsled yourself. Yeah, the skeleton, look it up. And ISTP invented that. Think of all those things, those interesting contraptions that ISTPs invent, and then they go try it out themselves, right? Because they're the ones who take the risk because feats of strength are proof of character. And then they use their ENFJ subconscious to teach the multitudes how to have those feats of strength. This is why they have mastery mechanics. This is why they're known as the artificer. This is why they exist. This is the ISTP. 
But no, I don't want to teach anyone because then I'd have to be responsible if I taught people things. Wow, that's like the main excuse that Templars give. It's like, stop being hypocrites. I'm tired of it. Wake up, grow up. Like, come on. Build your house upon the rock, not the sand. It's funny. Templars exist to look into the souls of other human beings and find out if that soul house was built on rocks, only to find out that the person that they're inspecting, uh, only to find out, only the only when the, the person that they've inspected finds out that the Templar's house of their soul is built upon sand. And like the Templar themselves is literally a house of cards. Wow. It's like Rocky Balboa on his bad day, right? You ever you guys ever see the most recent Rocky film, Rocky Balboa, the ESTP character, right? Talking to his son, you know, telling him about life. Hey, you know, let me tell you about life. Life will beat you down and keep you there if you let it, right? You know, you know, life is about uh, the not life is not about the blows you can land. The life is about the blows you can take. See, that's the thing about STPs and NFJs. That's the thing about Templars. ESTPs know it the most out of all these types. Life is that way. You want to be an example of righteousness? You have to prove to other people that you could take the hits. Stop being that really annoying man child who's like, well, I decided to beat my brother because, you know, I knew a lot of kids at school were going to make fun of him for being weak. So I figured if I beat my brother, then he'd have the strength to be able to handle all that from other kids. No, you're abusive. That's not how it works. You don't even understand yourself well enough to even understand how your brother works. Maybe you should pull the huge log out of your eye instead of trying to remove the speck from the eye of your brother. Jesus said that. Hmm, I wonder why. Maybe he was talking to ESTPs. Funny how an INFJ would be calling out ESTPs. Oh, wait, they call each other out all the time. This is why Templar types should not be in sexual relationships with other Templar types. Because they're both all about giving other people a good experience. They're all about showing people things. They're all about uh, making other people comfortable. And they compete because extroverted sensing represents the function for performing and performance. You know, extroverted sensing. And you put extroverted sensing in the ego of a man, he values his sexual performance, right? Because extroverted sensing is all about performance. And this is why the one type out of everybody who has the highest performance anxiety is the INFJ, because their FI critic tells them inside their heads, oh, you're worthless, you're useless. And then their SE inferior performance anxiety kicks in at the same time. And they're like, oh, I don't perform really well in sex, so I guess I'm not going to have sex. Or they just, you know, go a little too quick, if you know what I'm saying, trying to like get it over with, right? Or it goes a little too long, right? And then they're imbalanced because of that performance anxiety. SE is all about performance. They're all about being the painter. These are all painters. Templars are painters in a sexual situation. Where's their canvas? You put them both in a relationship. It's like two painters trying to paint each other at the same time. And it gets really, it gets really messy as they're painting each other. You see what I'm saying? And like no one's satisfied because there's no canvas. There's no SI user present. These types should not be in a relationship sexually at all whatsoever. Decision makers are even worse. They're both TI users and the TI users will just clash and then they will just, uh, uh, you know, debate each other and, and then it could lead to extroverted sensing rage, which leads to violence and these types will become violent with each other. There is no, I mean, my two mentors, the ESTP and the INFJ, they hate each other so much that if they are in physical contact with each other, they will literally put their hands up and it will go to blows every single time. This is why they live in different states. They can't stand each other. They absolutely vehemently hate each other. This is why. Because Templar types enter relationships with themselves, do not <laughs> go well together compatibility-wise. Camaraderie, however, they go together pretty decently because they can learn from each other's mistakes. Because, you know, cause and effect, right? STPs, NFJs, they just do things just to see what would happen. Luckily, the NFJs are able to see consequences because their introvert intuition hero and parent can actually see into their own future and they're realizing the consequences, but the STPs, not so much. STPs is like, oh, I'm just going to do this to see what happens. I'm just going to sleep with that person and see what happens. I'm going to be the other woman in this relationship just to see what happens. <laughs> wow. 
hypocrites. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying crusaders are, are, are any good. Like, their, their penchant for vengeance is absolutely just bothers me as much as, like, irresponsibility, the penchant of irresponsibility amongst Templars amazes me. It's so, it's so ridiculous. Because, like, you know, you know, I, 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 I you know, Peter Pan syndrome, Peter Pan syndrome was invented by temp Templar types. Let's be straight. It was invented by Templars because Templars are like, well, you know, uh, I don't, I don't have to grow up because then I have to be responsible. Wow. And it, and don't think I'm calling out the men too. The women do it too. How many times have I heard of a Templar type being the other woman in a cheating scenario, and they don't actually really care about the man? Wow. Wow. And then you call me out for being a charlatan? Wow hypocrite wake up so anyway the fiery sword of truth why does it heal now let's compare the icy sword of truth the fiery sword of truth the icy sword of truth when when it's being utilized by a crusader it actually freezes like it, it makes contact with limb it freezes and what happens when it's hit again that limb is shattered it's gone it's maimed it's permanent damage the icy sword of truth destroys it's literally like frostmourne you know, the sword wielded by the Lich King in World of Warcraft or Warcraft 3 wielded by Arthas. Bottom line is Frostmourne itself, it's a rune blade, runes, expert intuition, right? Uh, symbols and runes. It's a rune blade and it is all about icy and it freezes things. And when that, so when something is frozen and the sword makes contact with it, guess what happens? It shatters and it's permanently gone. The fiery sword of truth, you know, Sashomaru sword, it's so flaming powerful and so uh, so out there and so uh, you know so uh, you know so powerful and so big that that I, that that fiery sword it actually as it's burning the lies away it cauterizes the wounds it actually heals after time and it builds up people's character the ti of the templar tears them down and it lights them on fire but then it builds them up and it heals them and it builds strength of character. Because it's like, I am making you strong. I have made you stronger. You have stronger character. You can endure anything. I know because, and it's funny actually, my, my father-in-law, uh, who is a Templar type, he actually uh, told something uh, to my wife, who was also a Templar type uh, when she was growing up. You know, she said, he's like, you know, I'm not really smart, but I did this. And if I can do it, you can do it. That's a perfect example of Templar healing. That's a perfect example of Templars building character in other people. If I can do it, so can you. That's literally what they say. If I can do it, and I, so can you, S-E. That's what that means. You should do it because I can do it, right? It literally comes in through that standpoint, you know, because... The, the the low introverted sensing low extroverted intuition of the of the shadow because they had they they fought so hard to get that one experience this is why stps and nfjs especially stps take risks and put themselves in risky situations so they can have memories so they can have stories to tell other people because they use stories of their own feats of strength to encourage and inspire other people to do those same feats of strength because they know it will build character in other people because Templars understand, more so out of all the types, that risks build character. Taking risks builds character. Because if you're all in your comfort zone this whole time, you're just going to become a charlatan and believe your own BS. Yay! Wow. You know, like, how can they do that? I'll be honest, I at one point in time, I did believe my own BS. And it wasn't until I struggled with, you know, homelessness, horrible marriage, uh, and uh, uh, being broke all the time and, uh, you know, just dealing with these things consistently in my life, I believe my own BS. I was stuck in my comfort zone. And it wasn't until the two Templars of my mentors actually lit me on fire, burned all my lies away, ripped my belief system from me with their TI fiery sword and then healed me as a result and then showed me the truth about myself and those around me that I finally got it, that I finally woke up, that I finally was able to take full responsibility for my life. This is this is one thing, like Les Brown even says, you need to take full responsibility for your life. You know what, here, here, let's be honest. You tell ESTPs, you tell NFJs, oh, you know, my life sucks and I had a, I had a really hard time and uh, you know, I did this and I did that, blah, 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 and they're like, 
Yeah, so is everyone. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? SE, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it, right? That's what it is. What are you going to do about it? They're trying to show you to your face to teach you character, to teach you righteousness. You know, righteousness is so important. It is written, if a righteous man will fall seven times, a righteous man will fail seven times, but a wicked man will stumble in his foolishness and he will stay down. That wicked person, that twisted person, because wicked means wicker, which means twisted, that twisted person will not get up. That twisted person will stay down in their foolishness. That wicked person is unrighteous. But a righteous man, he will fail because everybody fails, but he will keep getting up because he will have the strength of character to do so. I look at my life right now, and thanks to my Templars in my life, thanks to you people, thanks to the Templars who are not who realize their own hypocrisy and accept their own hypocrisy and it's because they're aware and no longer in denial of their hypocrisy that they have the responsibility to take responsibility to meet their own needs, to have personal standards and personal boundaries and personal goals. As a result, you know, the four pillars of self-intimacy, you know, season six playlist on this YouTube channel, you might want to watch it. Because of these things, right, it's super important trying to see okay because of these things like realize you know templars who take responsibility you know it's like okay hey they taught me that and then i could take responsibility such that i've had everything taken away from me so many times i had everything taken away from me when i was 18 i had everything taken away from me in 2012 i had everything taken away from me um um 2012, 2013, 2014, some of the worst years of my life, right? You know, dealing with like, you know, homelessness and, you know, money and it was horrible. It was horrifying. You know, it, uh, uh, losing everything again, uh, you know, when I moved back to California, you know, I uh, losing everything with one of my failed businesses, right? I've lost so much, right? But here's the thing. If I'm in the ditch and I'm left for dead and it's cold and it's raining and I'm covered in mud and I'm literally naked, left for dead, and I realize no one cares. See, that's the biggest lesson that Templars teach you when they're burning you alive. No one cares. It's so funny when you see them be hypocrites trying to get other people to care about them, especially INFJs, who it's like, oh, you know, I'm gonna light myself on fire and self-destruct, you know? And it's like, oh, INFJ, you're calling me out and trying to tell me the truth that no one cares and yet you're a hypocrite. So I'm just gonna sit here next to your fire as you light yourself on fire and then I'm gonna mock you. And it's like, oh, okay, you know, look at your self-righteous suicide. Hmm, hmm. Oh, Serge Tankian, you know, a uh, 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 system of a down, shop suey, making fun of INFJs. Oh, an ENTP SE demon making fun and mocking INFJ SI demon crap. Wow. So poetic, right? It's because, you know, see, I may be left in the ditch, but every time I left in the ditch, and I, I'm very well acquainted with the ditch. I've hit rock bottom many times. I'm very well acquainted with rock bottom, but here's the thing. I made the choice to get up. And I got up and I stood up because I had the strength of character built in me by my Templar mentors. And I got up and I moved forward because I realized no one cares. It is no one's responsibility to help me. I, you know, uh, they are not, if I, if I am their brother, they are not my keeper. No one is my keeper. I am my keeper. It doesn't matter how much I've suffered. It doesn't matter where I've come from. It doesn't matter my childhood. It doesn't matter any of these things. What matters is what I do about it. So I choose to stand up in full defiance of the universe who keeps to beat me down and put me in my place into the ditch as many other Templars in my life, especially the bullies on the school ground when I was beaten so many times over and over and over by those stupid <laughs> schoolyard bullies, those ESTPs that would do it to me consistently. And they would beat me and they'd throw me back in the ditch. But out of sheer defiance, I would get up and keep going. And sheer defiance of this life, this life that is beating me down, sheer defiance of the universe that wants to see me in the ditch. I flip at the bird and I'm like, you know what? I'm here naked in the rain. No one cares 
But guess what? And out of defiance for you, I'm going to keep moving forward one step at a time. Because the truth is, folks, the Templars are trying to prove to you that when it comes to the fable of the tortoise and the hare, you may as well be the freaking tortoise. Because if you think you got that talent, you might as well be a charlatan because you're going to go super quick as that little rabbit with all the talent in the world. And then you're going to burn out and have nothing. But the tortoise, the master of the school of hard knocks, the tortoise who doesn't give up, the tortoise who understands that hard work always beats talent, the tortoise who understands that age and treachery always beats youth and skill. Another lesson by my ESTP mentor. God bless him. If you understand these lessons, it doesn't matter. As long as you don't give up, you will always find your way. Which is the lesson of introverted intuition, especially an I inferior, becoming an I aspirational. Introverted intuition, the power, the power of willpower that the Templars are trying to confer upon the rest of us and teach us these lessons so that we can have strength of character, the strength to endure. Why else does the ultimate, like the, um, why else does it say in the book of James, James, the brother of Jesus, another Templar, an ESTP. Hmm, imagine Jesus being raised with an ESTP. James, the brother of Jesus, an ESTP says, you know, my brothers, my brethren, you know, take joy when you have trials, tribulations, and problems in your lives, that it will build within you steadfastness, that it will build within you perseverance. That, my friends, is the final result of the fiery sort of, sort of truth. It is to create perseverance in you. This is the purpose of Templars. I just wish they'd get off their drunken asses and pick up the sword and get to work and realize that they need to take responsibility for their actions. Now, of course, not all Templars do this, but honestly, some Templar at some point has made the excuse of, well, you know, no one else is responsible, so why do I have to be responsible? Or I'm going to put off my responsibility so that I don't have to take responsibility. As long as I'm not judging other people for being irresponsible, I don't have to be responsible. You know, or, uh, or like that whole thing where it's like, well, you know, uh, your bad behavior is going to give me a license to behave badly myself. Ooh, the hypocrisy is real. Don't forget, everyone is a hypocrite but you have to choose not to be one. That's the point, folks. That's the true lesson here. You know, we, extroverted sensing, you know, it's, it's all about healing, right? Anyway, because of all that, because of that said fattest, because of that perseverance built in other people, because people are then all of a sudden as a result of being the victim of Sashomaru's sword of healing because of the fiery sword of truth itself because of standing up to the test of integrity that the templars put forward because of that test of integrity of estps of istps of infjs of enfjs the people that stand up to that test of integrity are the people they want to be with those are the people that they are attracted to the most those are the people they want to have great relationships with because they see those people are steadfast because they see those people persevere because they see those people are loyal because they see this, they want to be around those people and they show mercy to those people and they forgive those people. Those are the people that Jesus want, for example. That's just an example, right? Those are the people that the Templars seek. If you take full responsibility for your life, and take full responsibility for your actions before a Templar, they have no right to not be merciful. They have no right to use their fiery sword of truth to cut you down. Wait a minute, why? Because that fiery sword of truth, if you really do have strength of character, if you really can withstand their test of integrity, when they take a swing at you, it will be ineffective because your character would technically be flawless. They usually almost always fly into flaw, but if they don't find a flaw, nothing they do to you will matter because you are literally impervious to them because they've made you strong or another one have made you strong, strong like a diamond, flawed yet beautiful and definitely tempered by the pain of life because you have wisdom. This is why, for example, ESTPs and INFJs 
INFJ subconscious is the wisest of all the types in as much as INFJ ego can be the wisest of all the types because it is the NFJ and the STP's job to confer upon others wisdom. And they do that, and that which is the final result of the sword of righteousness, the final result of willpower plus truth equals character, equals righteousness, equals perseverance, equals steadfastness. Such is the way of the Templar types. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, or enlightening, please subscribe to the channel uh, here on YouTube. Also, leave a like while you're at it. If you guys are watching, please like this and also leave a comment while you're at it. Uh, very much appreciative. Uh, if you'd like to be involved with these live lectures, go to patreon.com forward slash csjoseph and also like sign up for the gold tier as well. Uh, don't forget, guys, I also left the ENTP INFJ relationship, a bonus episode for season 14 that is available uh, for silver and above uh, tiers uh, right now uh, in Patreon. And then we'll also be doing episode 10 next month, but gold tier and above will have the opportunity to vote on that. We're going to be putting together a questionnaire for everyone to listen to. That is coming very, very soon. I hope you all can be uh, involved with that. And uh, based on that, uh, let us have our Q&A session at this point. Uh, so let's move into the live stream window here and uh, have our Q&A session. So thank you all for watching and let us begin the Q&A. So uh, those of you in the live stream chat, please uh, leave your questions and let's begin the Q&A. Okay, so. Uh, John Stevenson asks, Crusaders are to faith as Templars are to what? Willpower. Faith plus truth equals justice, just like willpower plus truth equals righteousness, right? That's that's the difference for Templars, Mr. Stevenson. I hope that uh, answers your question. Uh, Master Exploder L14, how can we prove to Templars that we have changed? Basically, you need to get in their face. And you have to take away their choice of being able to get away from you and then prove to them consistently that you do have a contrite heart and that you expect their mercy because you have changed. Because you can, and you have to rattle off the criticisms that they said of you in the past or criticisms that they may have of you and be like, you know, if you think this way about me, if you think this, if you think this, here's what I did, here's what I did, here's what I did, here's what I did, here's how I improved. And it has to be a demonstration of improvement to, uh, to the Templar in mind. And you have to show consistency because then they'll start throwing tests of integrity to see if you pass the test, et cetera. If you can think about it itself, hellfire in of its own right is a test of integrity. I think, and I imagine that's why you know hell would be a place to exist. But I also maintain that hell is not a place of permanent existence. It's not a place for human beings to be at permanently, per se. But you know, you can look in biblical texts and where it talks about eternal damnation. The word eternal is actually eonian, which means eons, which means not permanent, but that's another discussion for another day. Uh, <clears throat> uh, John Stevenson, why are the beta quadra called Templars? Templars exist as people, uh, you know, metaphysically using the symbology uh, as people who uh, wield the fiery sword of truth. They are an order of healing, etc., versus the Crusaders, where they are an order of of, uh, of justice, basically. Uh, which can be twisted into an order of vengeance, uh, which can also be a, a problem, right? So, uh, Master Exploder L14 asks again, uh, can we call out Templars for their hypocrisy? Is it effective? Thanks for the answer. It's absolutely is effective. You have to consistently point out their hypocrisy, especially if they are criticizing you, because that's the only way they grow. That's the only way they change. You want a Templar to grow and improve themselves? You have to point out their hypocrisy. It's actually the only way to teach a Templar is when they're trying to teach you something in the process of them teaching something, flip it back on them and show them how much of a hypocrite they are. And then at that point, they'll realize that they themselves need to change and that change is almost always immediate. They don't, Templars are not habitual people like Crusaders, which is one of the risks of Crusaders. Uh, Templars usually aren't uh, habitual because a Crusader type, for example, they will, uh, uh, they mimic people, whereas Templars mirror people. And in mirroring people, uh, when a Templar mirrors somebody, 
uh, they they have the habits of other they have the bad behaviors or the good behaviors of other people. When those people go away, that th those behaviors are gone from the Templar. The Crusader, however, is not that case. They mimic. So when bad people are around, or even good people are around, and those habits of those people are actually taken on by the Crusader, and when those people leave, the Crusader retains those habits. This is why Templars need to help Crusaders by burning away those bad habits, while simultaneously Crusaders need to mete out justice upon um, and expose the hypocrisy of the Templars back to them to keep both of those uh, truth sayers, or those truth tellers, those truth wielders, or the sort of truth wielders, you know, to keep them sharp. Just as it is written, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man to another. The same process exists, Crusader to Templar. It's the same kind of relationship. Uh, John Stevenson asks, uh, if Peter Pan syndrome is the beta quadra form of procrastination, how does that compare to alpha quadra procrastination? Alpha quadra procrastination is kind of a form of depravity. It's being stuck in one's uh, comfort zone and being unwilling to go outside of the comfort zone and not being willing to leave the safety of the comfort zone or being willing to take risks. That's what procrastination is. It's, it's uh, inability or lack of desire to take risks or risky behavior. Uh, Jane Rage asks, how can inferior TI verify what is true? Inferior TI could verify what is true based on listening to other people. TI Inferior has the ability to potentially, through TI Aspirational, become the most brilliant out of us all TI users, but only if they are willing to listen. TI Inferior selfishly expects everyone else to listen to it to the point where it will steamroll other people, especially in uh, unhealthy TI Inferiors doing this to other people. But a TI Inferior uh, who is actually first willing to listen to other people, that's when they become the most brilliant. Listening is the key to success for TI inferior types. It is absolutely everything. Without listening, they basically become ignorant and then they march around looking like a know-it-all when everyone else around them realizes that they're probably actually, like everyone around them labels them as stupid, basically. And then that just pisses off the ENFJ or the ESFJ even more and TE Demon comes out, when in reality, it was actually the ENFJ and the ESFJ's fault to begin with because they decided not to listen to somebody. Or the ENFJ conveniently forgot to listen, right? Uh, Queen B asks, how should one decide uh, when to door slam versus when to forgive? If you are helping somebody, but they're not listening to you or taking action based on the help that you provide them, that's when you door slam them. But if they come back to you and demonstrate to you that they actually listen to you after or later, then undoor slam them and continue on with the relationship. It all, determ it all depends on what concrete actions the other person is taking to change for the better. And if they are not being consistent about it, if you're seeing a lack of consistency, or if you see that they're lying, if you see that they're hiding, at that point in time, you are more than justified as a Templar to uh, cut those people off and move on from them. Get rid of the corruption because you don't want to mirror those bad people anyway because they're not willing to listen to change and not willing to take your criticism. So as a result, uh, get rid of them. But if they come back to you, show mercy to them if they can prove consistent behavior and prove that they actually listened to your advice and listened to your criticisms and actually changed. Then have mercy on them and consider uh, and, and, and then forgive them, right? Look at it this way. When I talk to INFJs, I have this one INFJ, my very first uh, coaching client ever. I've been working with him for years. And I just recently told him to his face, quote, don't talk to me again until you get your shit together. That's one of the best ways to get an INFJ to listen to you. But INFJs or Templar types need to express that concept to other people. Don't talk to me again until you get your life together. That's literally how it works. Do not speak to me again until then. But the point is until. I don't know how many Templar types I know shut that door and door slam people consistently, but they don't give that added until. They don't allow people to come back. That's extremely selfish and wrong on the part of the Templar. And anytime I see that, I call them out for their hypocrisy because everybody needs somebody sometime. Uh, John Stevenson asks, if SE users are painters, would it be accurate to say Templars paint their partners with what their partners value, like Warefarers paint with what they themselves value? Absolutely. I very, I'm, Mr. Stevenson, I'm very happy that you came to that conclusion. That is absolutely 100% correct. Good job. Uh, 
uh, let's see, uh, Master Exploder said some things, uh, fair enough. Um, okay, this is, uh, is there any other Q&A that I could say for this? Anyone else have anything? I'm gonna check uh, one of my messages here. Maybe there's another question that I could see. Um, so, uh, so, uh, oh, apparently I posted the wrong link to the wrong question, but that's fair. Uh, let's see here. Am I having any, uh, drop frames? No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, it looks like we're done here, folks. Uh, there's no more questions. Oh, there's a question. Here we go. Master Exploder asks, is the only way to be righteous is to be cut with the fiery sword at some point? Yeah, because human beings are suffering with the human condition. Everyone needs to go through the test of integrity by the fiery sword. Everybody. It's not just for certain types. It's literally everyone. Everyone has to uh, come to face with that, just as much as everyone has to come to the sword of justice, the icy sword of justice itself, which is from the Crusaders. Everyone has to be subject to that. And as much as everyone has to be subject to the philosopher's stone of philosopher types, and as much as everyone has to be subject to <laughs> the traps of the wayfarers, for example, you know, um, or, or the pets, the wayfarers, right? So that, that's kind of, that's literally how that works. Uh, so, so yes, uh, everyone has to. Is Adam Savage an ISTP? I don't know. I've been asked that many times. Uh, I've heard people make arguments that he's an ENTP, like, uh, like Tony Stark, or that he's an ISTP. I just know my ISTP former boss absolutely loves Adam Savage. So uh, potentially. Uh, I, I don't see why he wouldn't be uh, an ISTP, but I also don't know ISTPs that wear hats like he does, so who knows. But that's a stereotype, and I shouldn't be making judgments of people based on stereotypes, let's be honest. So, All right, folks. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close Q&A. We're after uh, a quarter past the hour here uh, for uh, this episode. So thank you all for watching Season 17, Episode 7. Uh, thank you for being here for the live lecture for November 2019. It was fantastic. Thank you all for being uh, our patrons and uh, uh, really appreciate it. Um, so, uh, and uh, thank you for your uh, comment there, Mr. Exploder. I really appreciate that as well. So anyway, you folks have a good night and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Later. <laughs>